most common marine invertebrates are sponges, cnidarians, marine worms, lophophorates, mollusks, arthropods, echinoderms, and hemochordates. The body plan of a sponge has adapted to filter small food particles from the passing water allowing them to reside in most habitats. Chitons are the most primitive animals in the phylum Mollusca. Every chitin shell is made so that it will fit together and bend. Chitons live only in marine environments and are also recognizable by the eight plates that overlap on their back. The gills are located safely under the shell on either side of their foot. The adaptions seen in chitons allow these organisms to survive heavy surf, so they are often found in tide pools. Cephalopods and octopuses have highly developed eyesight, the ability to swim quickly, and the amazing ability to rapidly change color using their chromatophores. Another interesting adaption in the cephalopods is the development of an inky substance used to block the senses of sight and smell in predators. Animals with hard shells are protected from predation and drying out. In rough waters, most animals have flat shells. Animals that need to crawl into rocks to hide have flat shells to fit into smaller cracks. Cnidarians, such as jellyfish, capture and kill their prey with stinging cells surrounding their mouths. Echinoderms, such as starfish, have water vascular systems that consist of two rows of tube feet on the outside of the body that fill with seawater, so that when the animal expands or contracts, water is drawn into the feet. This allows them to be able to walk, capture prey, or stay attached to an object. Barnacles and mussels have also developed mechanisms that allow them to cling to rocks in environments where they might otherwise be easily washed out by strong waves. Fish are aquatic vertebrates that have several adaptations that allow them to survive in marine environments. The first adaptation that fish have are scales. Scales are modified tissue, often composed of keratin, that offer fish protection from parasites and predators. In addition, scales help reduce the friction with water, thus enhancing the speed of the fish. Another adaptation displayed by fish are gills. Gills function as the aquatic equivalent of lungs by helping the fish gain oxygen from its environment. Gills do this by drawing in water through the mouth and forcing it out of the gill slits, which are rich in blood vessels, which thus allow for the direct absorption of oxygen. It should be noted, however, that some fish have the ability to gain oxygen through air from gulping. A third adaptation is an organ known as a swim bladder. A swim bladder is an internal organ that a fish can fill up with or release gas from to control its swim bladder, meaning that the density is set how it is. Other fish, such as sharks, do not have a swim bladder at all. Therefore, they must maintain constant motion or else they will sink to the bottom. The final adaptation is one that only certain types of fish have developed, bioluminescence, or the production of light. Bioluminescence is most often observed in deep sea fish as a mechanism of attracting prey or mates. Bioluminescence can be produced by two ways, either through specialized cells called photopores, or through a symbiotic relationship with certain types of bacteria and the fish. Overall, adaptations such as scales, gills, swim bladders, and bioluminescence are only a few of many adaptations that make fish very well suited to their environment. There are more than 12,000 species of reptiles and about a hundred of them have re-entered the ocean. Some of the reptiles include sea turtles, sea snakes, various saltwater crocodiles, and marine iguanas of the Galapagos Islands. All these reptiles have lungs and some have developed salt glands to get rid of the excess salt water in the ocean. The largest of these reptiles is the sea snake. They are found in tropical and subtropical waters of the Indian and Pacific Ocean from the east coast of Africa to the Gulf of Panama. They live in shallow waters along the coast and around islands and river mouths. A typical feature that the snakes have is a vertically flattened paddle-like tail. This is not found in any other terrestrial or aquatic snakes. This adaptation helps the snakes live in the ocean. The sea snake also has a venom bite that can cause human fatalities. They use this to protect themselves when captured. Sea turtles are primarily found in tropical coasts and nest along the coastal areas of Central and South America or in the Caribbean. 
Sea turtles have adapted to be able to find home beaches when nesting times comes around. Sea turtles' are sh shape is important to them because they are shaped to minimize drag and resistance while swimming. They also have their flippers which allows them to move quickly through the water and act more like fish rather than other limbering reptiles. They also have the ability to camouflage and hide from their predators. A saltwater crocodile is the largest living reptile. They are found in the water of northern Australia. They have formed an adaptation that allows them to live in areas of high saltinity. They use their salt glands to secrete the excess salt ions and allows them to be able to survive in the ocean. Crocodiles, just like sneeze, sea snakes, has a laterally flattened body which helps them fly through the water. The marine iguanas are slowly moving into the ocean and begin to adapt to the environment. Marine iguanas are found in the Galapagos archipelagos. Some adaptations that these iguanas exhibit is the flattened tail and limited webbing on the four feet to help with swimming. They also have been able to reduce the number of heartbeats from 43 on land to 7 to 9 when they are diving. Many years ago, when dinosaurs became mostly extinct, marine mammals began to evolve from their land-dwelling ancestors. Marine mammals have developed many different adaptations to help them survive. The high salt content found in the ocean can support the large bodies of giant squids and whales, which allows them to evolve without the strong limbs for support. Instead of fighting the pressure when they swim down deep, they have their lungs collapse completely. Some oxygen remains in the lungs, but it mostly gets stored in their muscles. Their muscle tissue contains a much higher concentration of oxygen binding myoglobin than ours does. Once the animal's lungs have collapsed, it becomes heavier for the water and they sink. Thus, they do not have to use flukes or flippers to swim all the way down. This also helps them to preserve the oxygen stored. Other adaptations marine animals have include a slower heartbeat during dives, a reduced blood flow to non-vital organs, an unusually high hemoglobin count in the blood, and an unusually high myoglobin count in the muscles. Many marine mammals have blubber for insulin, for the cold, and some fish have an antifreeze-like substance in their blood. The tails of most fish are vertical to help them swim in side to side motion, and many animals use echolocation to help them avoid obstacles and find prey. Here's an example of echolocation. Whale! Okay! Maybe he only speaks whale.